Hello everybody and welcome to today's adventure. Yet again, if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button right over here. If you end up liking this video, hit that like button, it's right down there. But hit the share button, I'm a goof. So, to start things off today, does it ever just frustrate you when you allow somebody to go ahead of you because you think that they're going to go faster than you? And then you end up being stuck behind them forever. Like, this person in front of me, hopefully their license plate doesn't show up, but I left them in front of me like maybe five miles back, and now I've been stuck behind them doing like two miles an hour. No, I'm actually doing like just under 15, so like 13 miles an hour. I mean, sure, that I'm, I wouldn't go like terribly fast at this because it is really bumpy and if you haven't noticed, I am in the mountains because the desert doesn't really look like this. Yeah, sometimes I just get frustrated with people like, I'm doing something nice, allowing you to go ahead, you're in a four-wheel drive vehicle, and now I've got to wait for you. Like, really? What's that about? But yeah, we're hopefully going to be able to do something awesome today. Um, we'll see. I hope you guys are having a good day so far. Mine's just barely getting started. But, I don't know, we'll see what happens. There's all these little narrow bridges. They always intrigue me. I don't know why. I guess because I'm not used to going over little tiny, like, hand-built bridges. Um, if you watch the mountain vlog, we are soon to pass that area. Oh, oh, I thought they were gonna pull over and let me pass. Nope, they're just going slow over these little tiny bumps. That I'm just gonna go around. They, they went over them and I just do this. Go around it. Alright, so now, not only am I stuck behind the vehicle that I allowed to pass me, but that vehicle is now stuck behind a bicyclist who is trying to climb the mountain on his bicycle, if you hadn't guessed. Wow. So, all I can do is be patient. Typically, I'm a fairly patient person. So, for now, we can look at this awesome stream while trying to avoid hitting that log. That wouldn't be fun. Definitely don't want to be hitting logs out here. You got a flat tire out here, I'd be screwed. Yeah, just being patient. Driving less than five miles an hour up the hill. I can't believe this guy's actually riding his bike up here. No, thank you. Well, well the, the other vehicle's making a pass. It's like NASCAR almost, except for a Dodge and a bicycle. I got All right, I executed the most awesome NASCAR style pass ever on the on the bicycle. I drafted him and then slung shot around him. It was, it was amazing. No, it wasn't really amazing at all. I just barely cruised past him at like three miles an hour. Oh, a little squirrel over there. Hope he stays off the road. He might get run over by a bicycle. 30 minutes later, I am still stuck behind the Dodge. We're doing like three. And it's really not that bad. They slow down to go over a rock the size of like a Coke can. Like, really? Really? What are you doing? You're in a four wheel drive vehicle. It's not that low to the ground. Like, my car is lower and I'm just like, whatever, go over this rock. I mean, sure, they're in a much newer vehicle that they probably care more about. I mean, sure, don't get me wrong, I, I love my car. It's awesome, it gets me everywhere. It does give me problems from time to time, but that's expected with an old car. But yeah, I love my car, it gives me problems from time to time, like I said, it's kind of expected with an old vehicle. But yeah, just cruising up the mountain still. Um, probably 45 minutes later, we'll get to this cool spot that I want to show you guys. Provided this guy doesn't take like 30 years to get there. I may have like three times longer beard by the time I get up to this spot that I want to show you. We've gone 
five miles in almost an hour. So that there is a destination one of hopefully several. That is the other side of the mountain from where I live. And yeah, just thought I'd show you guys around. We're not quite at the top. I decided to pull over and show you guys that. And also give some space between me and the Dodge. That way I don't have to go super, super slow. I mean, I'm not gonna floor it and do like 90 up the mountain, but let's get going. All right, I'm finally on uh, paved roads. This road is uh, Highway 536. It leads up to the uh, back side of the mountain. There's two ways to go up the mountain. The dirt way that I went up, then there's also this Highway 536. And this road right here is used a lot on the weekends by uh, sport bike riders, like motorcycles or crotch rockets, however you want to call them. But it's really fun. I've, I've been up this road several times on my motorcycle. It's real windy, you can go pretty fast. However, one of my friends, Ken Fallon, who's a professional BMX racer, he also raced in the last two Summer Olympics. Um, he, was, he was riding his motorcycle up here and hit a patch of gravel or sand or something and made him slide out. His bike went underneath the guardrail and luckily for him, he hit the guardrail. He broke, I think he broke his leg and his arm and some ribs. And that doesn't sound very lucky, but if he had not hit the guardrail, he would have fallen like at least a good couple hundred feet, probably to his death. So that's why I say lucky. In this turn right here, when I, when I was on my way up this one time, there was a, a group of cars. We had met up at some gas station or something like that to, to drive up here. And I was hauling booty and laid the bike so far over that I was scraping the, not only my knee on the ground, but my foot peg and part of my fairings on the ground because it had folded my foot peg up. Alrighty. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, according to a sign back there, I've just reached 10,400 feet above sea level. So the altitude's, well the air is pretty thin, the altitude's really high. The air is pretty thin, the car does not like to run up here. You may, you may hear it kind of struggling slightly. I am in third gear doing 35, but the road's not terribly steep, it's just that the altitude is so high that my car hates it. It is carbureted. For those of you that don't know, uh, they didn't have fuel injection back when this car was made in 73. So, it makes it a little difficult for the engine to uh, pull in enough air. Had to switch hands because I had to downshift. Um, yeah, it doesn't really pull in enough air. So, it struggles a little bit. Yeah, we're almost to the top. I'm gonna see if I can talk to the forest ranger guy. Ask him if I can just park for free for a few minutes so I can I can uh, film for you guys and show you what the top of the mountain looks like down looking down on the city. Hopefully he'll be he or she will be cool with it, but I have a feeling they'll probably say no. So maybe a quarter mile from the top. Talk to you in a bit. All right. Forest stranger guy said I have to make it quick so I'm walking as quickly as I possibly can just gonna go up here to the top of the mountain and luckily he was pretty cool about it he just said make it as quick as possible so walking around this area and this is what the city looks like from nearly 11,000 feet up. Let's go a little bit higher up. All right, this is as high as I can possibly get on the mountain. That was scary. There is a railing here, but there's a little indention and I almost fell. But yeah, that's the city from 
nearly 11,000 feet above sea level. So, as I promised, the uh, forest ranger guy would make it quick. So, we'll head back down. And I got an idea for the drive down. Alright, so my plan for the way down is to not use my engine at all. I don't recommend this at all if you have a uh, modern vehicle as your power steering and your power brakes will not work because the engine powers your steering and your brakes. Um, however, in a car this old, there is no power steering and there are no power brakes. So I don't have to worry about that at all. All I get to do is save gas. Uh-oh, going up an uphill. Let's see if I can make it. I'm going to try to coast the, the whole 11 miles down the mountain. I think we got this. For those of you that don't know, Albuquerque is not only famous for the International Balloon Fiesta, which I plan to show you guys when that happens in, in the fall, <clears throat> but it's also famous, kind of, maybe not so famous, but we're also known for the world's longest non-stop tram. I think the, the total distance of it is, is just about a mile. Maybe a little less, maybe a little more, but yeah, world's longest non-stop tram. There are places that have longer tramways that go from like the bottom of their mountain to the top of their mountain, but they have stops in between where you have to get out and switch trams, whereas ours goes all the way from the bottom all the way to the top, non-stop. Alright, so far I've made it two miles without my engine on whatsoever. I mean, I, I used it to back out of the parking lot and to get going forward slightly, and then I turn it off immediately. As you can tell, there's no engine noise. I am doing almost 40 miles an hour, slowing down for the turns, but still haven't used a drop of gas. This is awesome. Every, there needs to be a hill everywhere like this, so I can just go downhill and never use gas. Then how would I get to the top? I don't know. All right, I've made it almost to the end of the pavement. I'm, I am gonna go down the dirt way, but I'm gonna try to keep my engine off. I don't think I'll make it all the way through the dirt because there are some uphills and I have to go kind of slow over some of the bumps, but we'll see how far I can get. But the cave that I was at in the uh, mountain vlog, that's five miles from here, so I'll see if I can at least make it that far. Hopefully I can. So back to some science for you that may be interested in that. Um, well, first off, still haven't used any gas, but back to science. The way, that, the way this works, if, if you're curious, is gravity is constantly pulling all matter downward toward, towards the center of the Earth. So, because my vehicle has mass, gravity is pulling it down, but since I'm on an inclined plane, which is a slope, or in this case a mountain, the inclined plane is propelling me forward due to gravi gravitational pull. And a trick behind doing what I'm doing is you kind of have to know when to use the brakes, how much brake to use, and for how long. Because if you use too much brake and there's a, there happens to be a hill in front of you, then you got to turn your engine back on. But if you use momentum, which I believe is mass times acceleration squared, no, I think it's just mass times acceleration equals momentum. And acceleration being a constant forward speed, it's not, it's not exactly how you would think of acceleration where you're truly accelerating. It's just a, a measurement of speed, really. But yeah, a little science for you guys. Alright, still haven't used the drop of gas. I am passing the cave now, and I made a pass on a vehicle while being completely unassisted other than gravitational pull, meaning my engine was not on still. And that makes it about nine miles that I've gone without using any gas whatsoever. Kind of kind of bums me out though because I can't turn my radio on because I don't want to kill my battery and then get stuck on an uphill and not be able to start. So that, that's kind of a bummer, but this is fun. Alright, so I've made it all the way back to Paved Road. 
Two successful passes. Let's turn on the engine so I can get up to speed. There we go. First time in 11 miles that the, that the engine's been on. Get back to you guys in a bit. Thank you all for sticking around this long. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button if you like the video. And as always, help me grow my channel. Hit that share button. That helps me out a lot. Adventure's done for today, but there's always another one tomorrow.